If you're into tech like I am or computers or networking, and you wanna take your skills to the next level, well, you've probably heard about something called home labbing. Whether you're sharpening your networking skills or you wanna learn more about virtualization or perhaps setting up your own personal cloud in your house, well, home labbing is the magic that makes that happen. Nerd. But how do you get started without feeling that very overwhelming pressure of what you need to get or what you need to do or what you need to learn? Well, stick around because today I'll walk you through everything you need to know to kickstart your home lab. So what exactly is a home lab? Simply put, it's your own personal tech playground, a place where you can experiment with things like software, networks, servers, without the fear of breaking anything important. Whether you're a seasoned IT professional, a developer, or just a hobbyist like me, the home lab environment is the perfect place for hands-on experimentation and learning. Now, the good news is, is it doesn't need to be that expensive. You can just start with a bunch of virtual machines. You can begin with putting them on a, your own desktop, or perhaps you have an old laptop laying around. Virtual machines will allow you to install multiple operating systems on the same computer, laptop, or even server. It's perfect for experimenting with Linux, Windows Server, or networking tools like PFSense. Some popular virtualization platforms include VirtualBox. Now this is pretty easy to set up, especially if you're on Windows, and it's super good for beginners. Now if you want to step it up, you could look at something like VMware, but that's more geared towards enterprise and can be a bit more difficult and a steep learning curve to be able to use that. And finally, my favorite is actually installing Proxmox on bare metal, meaning that I'm not virtualizing it, I'm putting it on a machine that typically I built. If you are going to put it on what we call hard metal or a dedicated box, you want to make sure with any of these virtualized platforms that you have a good CPU with a lot of cores and a lot of threads, as well as a lot of memory. And that's because we're chopping it up and we're going to dedicate CPUs or threads and or memory to each one of those instances or OSs. So in that regard, if you're looking to build one or buy one, then you may want to consider just looking up the processor, making sure that it has as many cores and as many threads, as well as enough memory to do what you want in the virtualization world. Along with that, well, you're going to want to learn Linux. I cannot install Photoshop. Like I need... Just use GIMP. No, I'm not going to use GIMP. Also, like half my Steam games don't fucking work. It is one of the most important skills that you will learn in home labbing. It's also the modern backbone of most infrastructure and a majority of your home lab projects you will work on or will involve in some way Linux. Whether you're deploying servers, managing networks, or working with Docker containers, knowing Linux is absolutely crucial. If you are new to Linux, I recommend starting with a beginner friendly distribution like Ubuntu or Debian. Play around with the terminal, practice basic commands, like installing software, managing users, and setting up file permissions. Trust me, mastering the terminal will be a game changer for your home lab experience. Once you're comfortable with Linux, it's time to dive into Docker. Now, Docker is a centralization tool that basically allows you to containerize and package and run applications in isolated environments called containers. Think of it as like a lightweight virtualization, but faster and more efficient for software servers and applications. One of the best tools for managing Docker containers visually, well, that's Portainer. Portainer gives you a really easy to use graphical user interface where you can deploy, manage, and monitor your containers without the need of, you know, remembering all these silly little command line arguments. Here's a quick peek at my workflow when I get a new machine in the door. I decide what OS I'm going to put on it based on what I want to do with that machine. Then after that, I quickly install Docker. After Docker, I'll definitely put on Portainer so that I can manage and even install my containers. After I have Portainer installed, 
Well, then the fun starts and I can start picking out what applications I wanna put on that server. Now, Pertain there is pretty powerful. It also supports things like Docker Swarms and Kubernetes. So it's excellent for scaling as you become more advanced. With Docker and Portainer, you'll be able to build complex application environments quickly, allowing you to test and experiment with a wide range of services, all from your home yes, lab. I prevent cross-site scripting. I monitor for DDoS attacks, emergency database rollbacks, and faulty transaction handlings. The internet, heard of it? transfers half a petabyte of data every minute. Do you have any idea how that happens? All right, so now you're comfortable with virtual machines and you're looking to expand. So you might wanna start investing in some hardware. So what are some of the basic networking components that you're going to need? Well, first of all, you're gonna need a router. And that can just be a router that you were given by your ISP or you got off Amazon or Best Buy, or it could be something more professional like those models from Ubiquiti. Now you can also choose to build your own router like I did with a small little N100 NUC box and then put PFSense on it. Now switches are something that you're probably gonna need as well. Now an unmanaged switch is okay, but if you're serious about networking, you're gonna wanna look at managed switches. So that way you can learn a little bit more about VLANs and some other advanced topics that we'll cover much further down in this series. Now in terms of a firewall, I like PFSense. There's also OpenSense. Uh, both are pretty good in open source firewalls that work great in home lab environments. And of course, if you don't have enough physical space or you don't want to invest a whole lot in this just to dip your toes into home labbing, well, of course, you can always look at some cloud providers, places like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. They often offer free tiers where you can certainly deploy virtual machines, learn about remotely connecting to them, and even deploy some services on them. With cloud-based labs, you can test enterprise-level solutions without any upfront hardware costs. It's especially great for learning about cloud computing, DevOps, or developing containers with tools like Kubernetes. The next few things are super crucial as well, and the first is documentation. Trust me on this, documentation is everything in home labbing. When you're experimenting with new systems, things will break and you want to track down and look back at your notes to see if you can figure it out. It's also helpful if things fail and you have to redeploy. One of the other things is, well, we all walk away or get busy and when we come back to it. It's nice to have that knowledge base to refer to. Now you can use things like Notion, Obsidian, even a simple Google Doc to log your progress and write down any notes that you may have along the way. And the last thing that you really need is to be a student of the game. Once you have got your home lab up and running, trust me when I tell you, the learning never stops. There's great communities out there on Reddit, one of which is called Home Lab. You can also check out a host of YouTubers and you can even consider taking some classes in things like basic networking on services like Udemy or Coursera. This will just help deepen your knowledge. And there you have it, a quick start guide to planning your home lab. Now remember, this can get confusing, this can get frustrating, but it's all about the journey and it will pay off if you stick with it. Start small, do a bunch of experiments, and build up as you go. No need to dump a bunch of money in right now. We talked about using cloud services. We talked about even using a Raspberry Pi. So the main thing is, is don't take it too seriously, but make sure you're planning, you're documenting, and you're having fun. Now, if you are setting up a home lab, please let me know in the, in the comments that you are, or if you already have one, let me know. And of course, if you have any problems or issues, go ahead and put a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer each and every one. And if you like this type of thing, we're doing a whole series on home labbing. We will get more technical, more involved. We will build out a little tiny small N100 NAS box. I'll show you how to put things like NAS software on there. We'll do Proxmox. We will build our own router with PFSense. We've got a lot to get to, but I wanna do this in logical order. And I do wanna stress how important this part is. Just make sure you're planning, make sure you're thinking about the future so that you can have a few years with your equipment and not just waste money. On the next episode, we will go into a bit more about the applications I use, and then we'll build a machine and we'll kind of go from zero to hero along the way. You chose the way of the hero and they found you amusing for a while. Eventually they will hate you. So if that interests you, do me a favor, please like this video, consider subscribing so you're notified of my next release. 
And as always, I appreciate it. I'm Hill Phantom, and I'll see you next time.